start recording. Good morning. It's good to have you here. Hope you had some push-ups and have a coffee next to you. Um, yeah. So I'll just uh, uh, I'm talking about the, the the previous test. So I've posted up the the, the question paper and demo for you to review. And um, we would I would like to discuss at some point. So I want to return your question papers, basically, so you can actually look if I missed a mark or two, you know. So yeah, and then I I like to ask. I think uh, if I'm correct, uh, Mr. Priyat and Smolders and Duplessis um, um, did fairly well for the test. If I, if I'm correct, um, would you be kind enough to possibly share some tips on your stunning approach here? And even a simply quite well. So, guys, before we start, could we just possibly share to our colleagues, you know, obviously, though, some of them watch the recording as well. What approaches did you take um, in order to prepare to get a 90 plus or 70 plus? Would be kind enough to share? Uh, can you hear me, sir? 100%, man. Yes, I didn't get a 90 plus, but uh, the test was set in such a way that it was very possible. Uh, mm. There a few mistakes then and there uh, that uh, one makes, yeah. but uh, studying wise, it was uh, just mainly studying the things that you provide and the things that you show on your lectures and what you normally recommend. I was suspecting mm. that you can put up that. Uh, Relative velocity question, you said it must be emailed to you. So it, yes. that's just a warning to us to take those things seriously. I think uh, Anne has done all of that. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Shogwe. And I, I think you encapsulated exactly, you know, from my side, I always start preparing way from the beginning. I also focus on the parts I don't, didn't understand or know. Um, just reading that quickly. Turn on this one up. Yeah, and it's it's not supposed to be very guys. But the thing is, it's simple, but it's not simple because you have to, you have to put in the work. I, all I'm providing is the core is like I, I'm trying to find a very great analogy here. Um, but I can't really. And then you need to you still have to put in the work. Um yeah, I, I expected more from Mr. Sean, we're actually funny enough, but um it will just focus on the lectures and asking as many questions as I could. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, Mr. Smallest did engage me quite uh, quite a few times. Um, I must obviously once I get the scripts, I have to probably look at the shows. I did explain with the show to do a bit as well, so I thought he he did. But this is not difficult, guys. Please don't waste your time and don't waste your money. You have to become second and chiefs. So a lot of you guys have the seat time already. You need to just put in this time, get the subjects out of the way. Next year is the last year of the diploma and it's over. So I don't want you guys to be, um, um, it's not easy, but it's possible. That's what I'm saying. The worst mark you're supposed to be getting is a 50. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, maybe Mr. Silver as well. Um, what do you recommend on, 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 you know, on, on studying tips? You're just talking about that, you know. What is what is your, your your method in terms of making sure you pass at least or getting a decent mark rather? What did you what did you change from last year to this year in terms of your studying approach? I'll just take a response and you'll start. Your mic's always messed up, so let me show type. So yeah, anyway. Guys, we have to discuss uh, when you probably have to meet, and then I'll at least we know already how the test is set. Yeah, it's 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 the scope is there. I mean, electric gave scope, not all exists give scope. I don't know, you know. Yeah, there we go. The, the obstacle. Um, yeah, please, guys, man, uh, put in the work. You 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 took off C. You've committed your time to studying. Make sure you learn from this. Um, obviously, I'm trying to provide you with a, a, an experience of learning. So make sure you learn. Um, don't need these things last minute. You're not S1, S2. You're not a kid anymore. Um, yeah. So I think 
But obviously, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk probably next week. Hopefully, I can actually just give the scripts. So I've done marking both for both of my subjects. So yeah, so I can just give it one time away or whatever. So you can actually just have a chance to review. But anyway, guys, let's get, get on on the, on the halfway mark. So today's chapter is called Mass Moment of Inertia. So it's chapter four, section four. Um, and it is the second most important concept you have to learn as a marine or mechanical engineer, obviously not particularly in the job in terms of analysis. Um, what is important was the first one of centrifugal force, understanding the concept of a centrifugal force. Um, so, and a centripetal force, basically that's the force to keep an object in rotation. Obviously it's counterbalanced by an inertial force, which is called the centrifugal force. And that's a typical one we use in the analysis, right? So the next thing, we are moving, obviously we, we're in the domain of rotation and we're going to be moving um, in that same vein, basically. Okay, so I think before we, before we get into the mass moment, this will be our schedule um, for the rest of the semester. And I'm try, I'm essentially going to try to stick to it. Obviously, there'll be some overlap between the, 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 the session and stuff like that. But why is this important obviously for, for scheduling and knowing where, where we're all going i don't think i can move at this too because i need to cover enough content um and obviously with all the public holidays and stuff it's a bit of a mess um possibly lectures i can shift maybe depending on how fast i but i'll talk about that in electros <laughs> but we have two public holidays which is on the 18th um, of April and 2nd of May, right? And they both fall on a Monday. Um, so consequently, we're going to have to shift those lectures to Friday. So instead of us having um, the session, it'll probably be Optimus Lowe's class. And, and what time is it? Is it from 12 o'clock? Can someone just confirm, confirm with me? It's very unfortunate to be on a Friday, but it's, it's only time available on the, on the timetable. What time is what, what time is Ms. Lowe's class in? Low is 11.40. Yeah, so probably from 12 till, till 3. The other alternative, which I didn't actually want out, what I don't want to do is have pre-recorded lectures and then you guys can't engage. So like I said, I only do pre-recorded if I know that it's like. So yeah, so that is my plan. So instead of Mr. Kampoi, you instead of having a Monday. I'll just, I'll just communicate just to state that um, you have lectures on the Friday instead, which will cover for the Monday. Otherwise, we're not going to get through this content. Is it clear to everyone? Is there any objections with, with regards to this or any alternative measures we can use to, you know, circumvent this public holidays? And obviously, we, we also want to enjoy our public holidays, so that's cool. It's no problem as long as we catch up. Is everyone fine? Is everyone fine? You can just send a thumbs up. And if you want to say something, you're free to say something. Great. Thank you. And obviously, I, I'm trying to make it, hopefully we can make those lessons on campus as well. But I don't know, we're going to see, I know the videos are booked and stuff, but if it's not on campus, it's fine. It will already be online. And I think you guys got the flow and I think my lecturing style is good enough. But we have to figure, like, figure out our online and on, on campus situation. Guys, please speak now, man. Don't be, don't feel that you can't say anything. We have enough time. I mean, for today to say anything. So what I'm suggest, proposing is that we have lectures from 12 to, to 3 on the Fridays on that particular days to catch up. I don't know what's going to happen with Navar, unfortunately. But that's more more time loss, and it's just funny that it's on two Mondays. You know what I mean? Which is a bit of a drag, but okay, it is what it is. Because I'm 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 leaving for two minutes. Okay, there we go. No, you don't have strength on Friday. There's not. It's it's not on Friday. You're just using that time. So I'll, I don't know why he's doing that. 
I'm saying you have strength on Friday at 3 p.m. Is that the detail? But regardless, I will, I will speak to Mr. Kampoy. Um, I think it's not responses. So yeah. Mr. Dupli, can you just be clear? Uh, yes, sir. Um, Thank he's you. He has said that his normal time slot is from 12 to, I think it was half past one. He can't make any more. So he's asked us as a group if he wouldn't mind us um, going from uh, 3 p.m. to half past four. I see, I see. So so why couldn't make his normal time slot? He wouldn't say. He just says, says he's unable to anymore. So, so if that means... Is it possible for us to basically use his time and we just do mom's day and you know that other time? Are you with me? Yeah. I think yeah, some, I'm instead of us wasting the time. Um I'm gonna let, let, let me let me speak to him. Don't worry about it. I'm just getting out time to put you out here. Where is the time I haven't seen it for a while actually? Um he has closed that time now. Oh, so there's maybe a shift. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him and if he's gonna be open that Tuesday part, that's gonna be fantastic because guys, let me just get this the ST time table here. Just bear with me. So, I mean that's that's great then. Because then we have money and we have Monday and the the Monday and the Tuesday for, for moms and whatever. Um it's no problem. I have no problem with that. Uh, let me just get uh, guys. If you have time, please complete that feedback. I would appreciate it. I'm looking for the SD timetable as well. My early term feedback. SD timetable. I'm gonna open it up now. Why don't I see this? Yes, class with us on Tuesday. Yes, this is Mr. Solva. But for those who got lower mark, is there any chance to push up the mark? Um, the Kitongo, a lot of the people who've actually managed to get good marks or 100% is because I put up bonus marks in the test. That's the typical way I give you more marks. Um, and there wouldn't be another alternative. And the problem with that is that there's no time, as you can see. People are not, in, and if I if I say, here's an extra thing to do, people complain, you guys are really complaining about tests, extra tests, or the way the test was structured, it's, it's very tight. It's very unfortunate. Um, and, and, and for this particular subject, it's not very easy to... I was like, one can give an assignment, but that's why I give bonus marks when in the test. So currently, there is no way to boost up your mark. You have, that is why you have to pay attention. Um, um, there's no other way for now. And luckily for, for the exams, no DP. So whether you get less than 40% for your year mark or whatever, you have a chance to write. I, I, I think that's clear. Wait, sir, I didn't get it all. When do you want to start the Friday classes? The so CPO, you're listening. What are you doing? Are you still sleeping? What I'm saying is you have two public holidays here, the 18th of, of April and just the 2nd of May. And what I'm proposing that we use Fridays. But now Mr. Duplessis said that you can't make the Monday class for whatever reason, which is, I don't understand why. So I need to just sort that out. Oh, sorry, you can't make his Tuesday class. Um, so we need to obviously shift, otherwise we, we won't complete our, our syllabus. We're already cutting a section short there. I can't find this timetable, man. Um, just give me a, a moment quickly. I'm just going to the group. Just the not the modern timetable. And I see you guys with your final timetable as well. 
I made sure that this year around, you know, this could not just keep it on a Monday. Mr. Smolders, it's a public holiday. Now we wait for your response. Guys, it's public holidays on the 18th of April and the 2nd of May. 2nd of May is work. It is the 18th of April. What is it? Some Good Friday thing. Just check. At least when you have a cross on in the holiday, it's also fine. Is everyone with me? It's public holidays, South African public holidays or university holidays as well. Sweet, I see. Is everyone on the same page? Big time, we are talking about the stuff here, but I guess it is important. 18th of, 18th of April is family day and the 2nd of May is workers day. Ah, nice Tashirik. So guys, what I'm saying, if you can't make that, that, that Tuesday, right? I can just use that time on Tuesday. And what's good about that, and yes Tashirik, you correct. We shouldn't be crying on public holidays. It's, we're supposed to be working through it. And what I'm saying is that if you can't remember what, what's nice is that then we can possibly meet on campus or whatever. We'll make a plan on that Tuesday. But I, I'll, I'll confirm with you. But I'm just letting you know this only applies to the, the 18th of April, that week, and the 2nd of May, this, the following week. Or the, 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 the second week from the only those two days only those two times not don't worry about the rest i hope you guys are clear because monday will not be there so then you have to shift anyway is it all clear for now so what i'm saying is that you make a plan on the 18th and the second and i'll let you know i'm saying that you're on the official platform everyone should have an idea all right is okay let's begin Okay, I hope it's online. It might, well, it depends, man. I was, you know, some of you guys don't want on camp. Some, some, a lot of you guys miss me. Oh, clear online, please. So it's a problem. You know, some people don't want to see me, don't want to touch me and everything, you know, get my signature and all of that. So I don't know. It's up. It's no problem. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm flexible with both. As long as you guys are happy. Yeah. See, see on campus online, on campus online. So yeah, we'll figure it out. Just just take it, take take it week by week. They can touch on the future. <laughs> Good morning, Miss uh, Miss Cool. We are just discussing. Um, we are just discussing. Um, um, our lectures lecture plan for the remaining of the semester. Okay, and let me see. Online is great because you can attend and ask questions and you watch it at later stage. That 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 is what Mr. Small has been doing, you know. So it's 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 great either way, you know. Um, as long as you focus, you're not here to relax. I think a lot of people when they're online, they're sitting, they're sleeping, you know. You're supposed to be ready to work now. But anyway, guys. That's our lecture plan. We're doing mass moment. We we'll probably do a bit of mass moment in the 11th of April as well. I start in simple harmonic motion. There will be some overlap on pending. Um, and then yeah, but you end off end off with bell drives, uh, chapter seven. Um, whatever I don't possibly finish off, it'll definitely be covering heat engines. But um, I'm trying to add another section heat engines, specifically shaft designs. So I'm quite excited about that for next semester. Got some nice stuff for you lined up for next semester for moms anyway. Um, but that's, this is the core chapter. Seven chapters is typically a, a, a semester's worth of work. This is what I did last semester anyway. Um, okay, so let's move on. So we will discuss the 18th and the, and the second in, in terms of that week. Whether it be on a Friday or Tuesday, you'll get an announcement. Um, guys who just joined, class test one is there and the memo. Um, and I'm hoping to possibly drop the scripts 
I was either going to see you on class, do the scripts, I can drop the scripts at a secretary and you can come and you can go fetch it. Um, maybe Mr. Breer can just find a book and just discuss how I can, I can just drop the scripts on the Tuesday and you guys can just get the scripts from Ms. Nkani or whatever. And obviously you review the scripts, if I missed the mark or two, just let me know. So I can amend. All right, so let's begin the, the actual lecture. Okay, so just first things first, if you have the textbook, obviously you guys have a, a later version of chapter 31 as well, kinetics of motion of rotation. Um, obviously, you know, it's your Kurbi textbook. It's, it's going to assist you somewhat. So I recommend just having a look at that. Maybe, maybe if I'm not explaining certain parts well, um, you can obviously have a look at that as well. Cool. So if you remember in the start of the, of, of, of when we met each other, right? Um, I mentioned to you a concept of two types of motion, right? What we call two types of motion for now is linear and also rotational. Um, and then obviously with linear, we've looked at when a system accelerates, we found that there is an inertial force acting on the object. Um, that was the kind of purpose of that. And these are obviously, I had some foreshadowing here, if you, are, if you are really thinking about it. And then where we head on to is, um, anyway, so we just do, we, we discuss what translational is essentially linear, something moving back and forth. And we say that the coordinate system is fixed, right? So it's moving straight, X, Y remains the same. Um, you're going to see why this is important, like I said to you. Right, from A to B to C, you can see the X stays exactly at the horizontal and the Y to vertical. So what is rotation? Obviously, we all are aware of something rotating. We've seen many things rotate before. A wheel rotate, um, a belt drive, a gear system, possible tape. We've seen many things rotate. Um, and they say a motion that is called um, 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 rotation or motion of rotation or rotational motion is when our that coordinate system of ours um, is actually changing and it doesn't remain parallel basically to whatever fixed point rather. Um, obviously we've, we've, we've looked, obviously we have an idea of what the example is, right? Um, so an idea is there, we've got O in the center basically and as you can see it's changing, the axes are changing. And you'll see why that is particularly important, right? So keep this thought in mind, park it on the one side for now. So if you move a body, Newton's second law, right? We've found out that there's something called inertia, right? So an inertia is defined there is the property of a body to resist any change in velocity. We've, we've done some analysis. Obviously, we haven't seen it. Um, you know, we haven't done any experiments or anything like that, but obviously we get idea. And how do we quantify that? We quantify it by the virtue of its mass. And its mass is its translational inertia. It's linear inertia. Is it clear to everyone? Do we all grasp that, that concept first? Good morning, Mr. Sinegrab. Also, is everyone happy with that? Is everyone following? Right? What is linear inertia? It's mass. Fantastic. It's translational inertia, right? We know what that is. Something's moving in a straight line. When you're designing something and pushing in a straight line, there's going to be resistance. I want, I want you to be conscious. And when, you, when you're on board a ship and you're moving things around and, and you're figuring out how much force we need to move something, and so you're hoisting or whatever you're doing. Remember this inertia. But now the question is, what about rotational motion? That is the question. What about rotational motion? So if linear motion has inertia, it stands to reason that rotation motion should have inertia as well. Right? So this is today's guess lesson is that even though it has a translational motion or linear has its own, its sister or brother, we could say, rotation has similar a similar property to um, um to, to 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 you know to changes in velocity or so, so to say. 
Okay, so I'm not going to be too theoretical about this particular thing, but I'm going to give you the formal definition. So we either call it mass moment of inertia or rotational inertia. And I'm dropping the first bonus mark possibly here. Right, very important slide, make sure you understand it. Um, the mass moment of inertia, or known as a rotational inertia, linear inertia, and so instead of saying on the long, the MMI, we'll just say the rotational inertia, obviously, is a quantity that is used in measuring a body's resistance to its change in rotation, direction, or angular momentum. In this case, it's just the resistance to rotation. Just, just like linear, the way, way you could have said the mass moment, the rotational, um, or the mass moment of the rotational inertia is the mass. Ah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm missing it. I'm missing it up here. And basically, what, it's, what it says is it basically characterizes the acceleration undergone by an object or solid when the torque is applied. That's fantastic. You apply a torque, you're actually accelerating a body if you're thinking about it. Um, the mass moment is denoted as letter I. So I just want to be clear that make sure you understand it's a very simple definition and make sure you know it. Uh, furthermore, they state here that the mass moment of inertia of a solid, right, not of a liquid, obviously liquid have a different kind of thing, and measures the solid's ability to resist changes in rotational speed about a specific axis. That is more clear. Can I just say that again? Ability to resist changes in rotational speed about a specific axis. Well, that tells us that the mass moment will change by axis, and it's based on this thing over here. Because that coordinate system is changing, right? So we will talk about obviously that. So I want you to be aware there's another factor there, right? So that's what mass moment is, right? We know it's as we know it's the resistance to um, to rotation, but it goes further, but that it depends on which axis you're rotating on. Cool. Um, next part is the larger the mass moment inertia, the smaller the angular acceleration about the axis we're giving torque. Um, they're saying the mass moment inertia depends on the reference axes and is usually specified with two subscripts. This helps providing clarity during three-dimensional motion where rotation can occur in multiple axes. Very interesting. So if something has a, a larger mass moment of inertia, from what I understand, it's harder to rotate, right? Um, so it's a smaller ang angular acceleration. So that kind of makes sense for given torque. And obviously I'm dropping words, torque, accelerate. It's all going it's all to be clear. So what you have on the right is the, the integral or the general formula um, on how to actually find the mass moment. Um, so fortunately for you, I don't expect you to do any deriving of objects. Um, but if you are interested in seeing, seeing that, I can obviously show you how to do it. But it takes like 15, 15, 15 to 20 minutes. I can let you just pop up a note and I'll show you exactly where it is on how they actually get, how they actually get the formula for all the objects. But luckily, for us, we get the formula, we understand what it is, and we apply it. Cool. Just going further on this, um, added up this recently. What it also means is there's two things where this comes out, but your rotational inertia is that if you have your mass closer to the, 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 the axis of rotation, you do have less rotational inertia. And if you push the mass further away, um, away from this, uh, with, with axis of rotation, it'll be harder to rotate. I don't know if you guys can relate to this this kind of concept, right? Who has experience with something like this before? Who has experience with rotating things and they found out it's more easy to rotate in one way than the other way? Anyone? Please share if you have, whether it's on board a ship, in your garage, your uncle's factory, company. Who has experience with rotating and it's more easy to rotate and you know yeah so be a vanga bongs anyone with shongwe with asa any experience with the dif difference in rotating So I don't know if it's the same, but uh, when you check the bearings of, uh, say, a pump or a motor, if they you want to mm. check if they've collapsed, um, normally you, you decouple and then you hold the shaft and you try to turn. 
it will be more difficult there, but if you bring your hand closer to the bearing mm. itself, it tends to be easier to, to turn. I don't know if that uh, is the same example. No, yes, it is. It is. It's, to, to, it's exactly because you're further away, um, um, there's more inertia, essentially, you, you, there's more mass, and then if you come closer, there's less. You, you see the problem, with, and, and, and fantastic, with the show, a lot of the stuff we teach, it's not, you know, it's, it's, that is why I appreciate the guys who, who, with great experience here, guys who are going to second, basically, or if not second already. These concepts are hidden in the, the technology, and not supposed to be hidden. The purpose of us here is to bring out these concepts in the in the lecture space so that when you do this thing you should know you know when you're talking about or oh, the distance you must keep all these things are important so that's a great example but obviously i'll, I'll touch on more relatable things i think now another example and you learn this i'm not sure if you're going to learn announced the into materials too obviously it's a it's a, it's a whole different it's a whole different ball game um and it's the same when you, if you guys have a ruler next to you, a 30 centimeter ruler, stock, stock ruler, or even a small 15 centimeters, is that when you bend the beam, right? So if you're laying it flat, if you look at the image over there, the one on the on the right, it one will deflect more easier. But if you, if you take one upright or standing on its edge, it's harder to deflect. Do you guys get that? It's a similar concept, but that is called second of moment to air and that's resistance to bending. So we actually have a, a we actually have a quantified number to 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 figure out the resistance to bending. Do we get that concept of what the mass moment is? It's a similar concept. Anyway, I don't know. Let's see. Um, another one is you might ask the reason why is happening, but in this case, it's all about the the it's it's from the from the from the centroid or the or the, dist, or the center of the thing. So if you have more, the further the mass goes away, right? You get a higher um, inertia, uh, which is essentially similar to this here. So obviously we're talking about bending here a, a bit, but it applies. So the further the further mass is distributed away from the center, you end, you end up getting more rotational inertia. So that's quite interesting actually, just to you want to think about it. So it's exactly the same thing. Okay. Furthermore, what this does, what mass moment actually does, it gives birth to a few new concepts. Um, and these concepts, well, I don't know if I'm overwhelming with information here. Um, hopefully not. And these concepts are, if you look at your linear, um, 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 your linear counterpart on second law, it equals F equals MA. You get torque. Torque becomes I, which is the mass moment of inertia times alpha. If you look at your 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 linear your, your linear kinetic energy at half mv squared, and in the angular counterpart, obviously in the rotation domain now we're going half I, the or the mass moment times omega squared. And obviously we can apply exactly the same to your, your momentum, which is your mass times velocity. And then for angular to be your mass moment. So wherever we see mass we, we, we have your moment of inertia or your rotational inertia and we all, all have to do is times it by your angular velocity counterpart is it clear to everyone that is just what this does i'm not telling you you know i'm just showing you what it gives birth to we're still going to unpack these things yeah so we've actually the equations became more colorful they become more colorful now this over here it's just it, it's from the textbook and it literally explains uh, the the relations between your linear with your translational and your and your rotational part mass we have moment of inertia force we have torque force equation we have f equals ma um on the torque side we have um that's quite strange thing it's the torque we have i times alpha linear motion v angular motion omega linear momentum um and we have rotational kinetic energy which we'll be doing in the next part and we have obviously with work done we have torque times omega you've done that in mechanics one and work time is force times distance or the distance transverse or move or it's s you know the, the force times distance of um, fd or whatever so that's what mass moment does it brings us to a whole another domain of when things are rotating what it means is that when things are moving in a straight line 
you have to do one type of analysis or one type of thinking. But when it's move, when it's when it's rotating and moving in a straight line, you gotta conduct both. So it's not as simple as just you know looking at one form of analysis. So one must be cognizant of that. And we luckily we do systems where we combine both linear and rotational motion and its forces. That's in the OIS sense stuff. So I'm making you aware. So when you do analysis, think of this is moving straight, but it's also rotating. You know, it's 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 all part and parcel. Um, what happens is, um, obviously, we get to the good stuff now. Our, 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 we also have Newton's laws of motion of, of rotation, and it's essentially the same as as the as the ones of, of motion. And it's basically, um, you know, everybody continues state of rest or uniform motion of rotation about an axis unless it's acted upon by an external torque. So instead of torque, instead of force, we put in torque. Um, obviously, they, they say the rate of change of angular momentum of a body is directly proportional to the impressed torque. And it, it's, if it's t torque equals I times alpha, and to every torque, there's an opposite and equal. To every torque, there's always an equal and opposite torque. So same thing. Don't have to know this. It's, it's kind of intuitive since it is under the, the first part. We are, this is again highlighting the emphasis because you're going to be, you have to be, you're going to have to use this torque equals your moment of inertia, your mass moment of inertia, your rotational inertia times your angular acceleration. Now, before we start, um, and I want, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do the numbers on this. I'm going to throw a small poll out quickly. And I want you to, um, um, obviously, I'm like hitting you now because obviously we, we're going to get into all the, the shapes and stuff now. Um, but I think I should actually get to, yeah, let, 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 let me leave, let me park that and I'll come back to that. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so, 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 here, so, so here's the deriving basically what's happening. So they, they give you a rigid body, it's rotating about the axis. Obviously, we've got about the, the, you know, the centripetal force and all of that. Um, we basically, so we, we know we have F equals MA, we, we, we change the A into alpha times R, um, times both sides by R, um, I think. Um, and then what happens is you end up with basically um, torque on the one side and the other side, which is the, the mass moment on the other side, which is M times R squared, right? Um, which is equal to torque times alpha. I think, I feel that I, 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 I missed a slide here. It's, it's, not, it's not actually appearing here. Which tells you the definition of the mathematical de definition of, of a mass moment. Well, it's not that on over there. I'm realizing that now. Um, let me just find this now before 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 it bothers me the whole time. Yeah. Oh, that's the actual equation, but it's fine. So anyway, I'll just continue with what I have. So what's important there is that your mass moment is equal to the mass of the object times something some radius squared, right? Fine. Eventually we get torque. Um Again, what it talks about, um, what, what this is going to talk about, they're saying um, it's essentially the same definition as above, but it, it says again, it's analogous to mass in the case of linear motion um, and describes the relationship on the dynamics of rotation motion, which is, this is a, a better example. And it says, the, um, it's a better explanation on the previous one. And it says that the moment of inertia needs to be specified with respect to some axes, which is very important. I remember that it depends on the shape, it's very important. In fact, this is a very important slide. You should know it. The, the rotation inertia differs from objects and varies according to the axis of rotation. Um, anyway, so this here is very important. And, and again, talking about the mass, they're saying a large diameter cylinder um, has a greater rotation inertia than one with a smaller diameter. So that's quite interesting. Obviously, it's to do with the mass being distributed away from the, the axis of rotation and all of this. Um, yeah, we're gonna, that, that's, that's supposed to get something. Okay. Um, oh, just, just why is this important? You know, I'm talking a lot here. And, and where do you apply this? A lot of the reason why we use mass moment, obviously we, we are aware that there's a torque attached to this mass moment now. And we basically use this in analysis and design of mechanical machines, right? Um, and I say in the in dynamic contexts, and what I mean is in rotation. So your transmission systems, are the, obviously your clutch, your gears, your shafts, um, your piston, and your, your crank, your, your brakes, belt drives, fly, flywheels, even part of abrasion, you, you need a mass moment analysis. It's it's anything rotating, you're gonna see eyes there. Um, 
Okay, that's just like a, a typical, uh, well, uh, I'd say basically there's a, it's illustration like somebody in type care box, whatever, of there, th this Beveloid get on mission anyway. So it's probably quite old. Um, and over here, just a, a similar thing where we've got all these different types of components moving. And obviously the mass moment inertia is very important in the analysis. Um, another cool thing, or another more practical thing is when you're sizing a motor, um, um, for instance, this is more on a automation aspect, me mechatronics type thing, where if they were designing, for instance, we look at the, the index table there, it's on top second, we have a table rotating, obviously moving boxes, obviously on a production line and you have your, 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 your belt drive and your motor. What one has to do to size the motor correctly is actually work out the inertia, right? Um, that's one of the things. If you have your belt conveyor, for instance, there, the belt conveyor, it's also turning and it, it has its own mass moment of inertia. Um, even that arm, if you have an arm moving up and down, you need to kind of work out the inertia that because that's actually rotating um, um, about that, that axis. So it's a very important concept when you're actually designing motors. I, I think it's a lost art somehow. Um, if you have a, yeah, if there's a rotary table, a rotary device, but anyway. So I'm just letting you know why it's important in terms of this. Okay, so I did talk about this particular slide here. And I said to you, it's with respect to some axes and it depends on the shape of an object, right? Here are some examples um, of that. So what you're seeing there is the, the shapes which you'll be essentially using or some of the shapes. And under each shape there, uh, let me just, I hope you can see that. Let me just open it up. It has its own formula, right? Let me just zoom this up a bit so you can actually see it. So I, okay, well, that shouldn't be there. But anyway, that's one over 12 times the mass times length squared. That's for thin rod, which you're probably using for, and, and, and then we'll talk about if that's when it's rotated in the center. Um, if you have a hollow ring there, it's just mass times radius squared. That's that's a hollow ring. If you have a solid disk, it's half times the mass radius squared. Um, got a solid sphere there um, and a hollow sphere, and you've got all these different things. I'm going to try to make it further. Here are some examples again. Um, I think it's kind of like essentially in real time in the way that you would see one rotating fast again, a, a solid disk, a, a hollow disk, and all of them, all different shapes have different formulas. Obviously, so if you had to look at your formula sheet, your formula sheet looks like that, if you, have, if you guys seen it. And as you can see, there is around seven shapes, um, plus these other flat plate, the flat, the flat plate and the thin rod is the formulas you have to know. As you can see, that tells you how to compute your mass and how to compute your IXX and IYY and IZZ. And we'll talk about that. And, and what that essentially means is that that's how we actually calculate um the, the the for the different components um in terms of your, your mass moment so what's important is that when the shape changes there's a different formula and obviously if your material changes that, that means your mass will change as well and obviously um depending on which axis it rotates um you have to apply a new formula so i recommend getting that um, yeah, so that, that, that's a formula sheet increase. And obviously, the next, we're getting to the fun stuff now. We apply the stuff. So enough of me talking. So is there any questions regarding this before I move on? I think I talked a substantial amount. Was I, did I lose you somewhere? Clear, so thank you, Mr. Duplessy. Thank you, Mr. Gitovo. Yeah. So, um, anyone else? Maybe. So, all we're going to be doing is applying these formulas, and you'll see it's, it's, it's how it will all work out. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and I wanted to do this, this, this basic one. We actually kind of predict which one will be first. Um, But obviously I've kind of like 
Yeah, I've mentioned that anyway, so that's perfectly fine, whatever. Okay, so what I wanted to do now is compute the mass moment about these shapes here, about all the axes. Um, and what I recommend is getting your formula sheet out. So you're able to basically follow me. So I'm gonna give everyone five minutes just to get your formula sheet out and I'm gonna show you how to apply these formulas and we can talk about, you know, the values we get and all of that. Um, so yeah, so let me just, so this is the formula sheet you wanna get. So make sure you just quickly get it. Um, then you'll start at, not a break, but you'll start at 25 minutes past. I just wanna get my, my note pack as well. So what are you gonna find? It's, it should be at the back of your your formula sheet. Um, the formula sheet has one, two, three, four pages. So it's, it's one right at the back. Tell me if you've got it. Let's see. Um, yes, I have it. Got it. Fantastic. Okay. Um, that's three people. Hope everyone else has it. Um, so let's 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 move on. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna duplicate the slide here so we can just work on the slide. Um, and then yeah. So let me show you how to apply this formula here, right? Um, so I'm just gonna snip out the, uh, the part that we need. So that's all clear to us. So guys, obviously the first part is identifying the object, right? So I'm just, I probably shouldn't have done that. It's not a smart move. Um, I'll snip from the top here. Cool. Um, here we go. Cool. So just take that and just place this over here. Cool. So got the moment of inertia there. Yeah. Obviously, you have everything you had here. Okay, so typically what happens with this kind of thing, you have to work out your, your mass. But in this case, I'm gonna be giving you a mass. Um, and I'll use it here. Let's say it's we can make it like 125 kilograms, right? So I'm being aware, and you, you'll see once we start getting into um, all the other stuff, you, you will start um, um, becoming a bit comfortable with with all of these 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 things over here, um, with different shapes and stuff. But anyway, I'm just I'm just getting warmed up here, basically. Cool. Anyway, so. What is important looking at the shape is knowing the directions here, right? So this at the center here, um, that's Y, right? Um, and what this means is that the body is rotating 
like that. And if it's unfortunate, I don't have an image of, of, of this tree how it's rotating. It's rotating about that center point over here, right? That's the Y. That's when you're rotating about the Y. And when you, when you have the rotating at Z, that's in the center, right? So obviously the body's rotating um, like this. So it's rotate. I don't know if I wish I had an image to show you. It's rotating about that axis. And when it's rotating about X, let's remove that. It's rotating this way. Is that clear to everyone in terms of how, how this works? Because you, you're going to have to identify in which way this is, this is rotating. Does everyone understand that? That's what it means, right? Okay. Cool. And what I like to say is that these formulas over here is derived from that model. Um, so fortunately for you, I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to spend time on, on, on using, we're going to come straight to the point where you actually just have the formulas and you just have to apply them because it'll take literally like three weeks, a whole session, three weeks, the way we have to get the whole concept through. What's important to understand is that it's a, it changes depending on how you rotate the body. So I hope you guys get the way it rotates. Cool. So let's start with IXX, right? So we've, we are given the dimensions. So following this, this is your length. This is your breadth. That, and this is your height over here. Okay, cool. So for the first, for IXX, you got to use this formula. Right, so it's rotating exactly as you can see in front of you. Um, the mass was given as 125. What is the length? Um, 120, so 0 0.12. Um, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite happy with myself anyway. 0 0.12 and I is 0 0.035. So then I'm realizing something is missing here. And the unit for this will be kilogram meter squared. This is this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's see what IXX is. Can someone give me that value. So what are we doing? If, yes. 1.26. 1.26. Thank you, Mr. Shongwe. So it's 1.26 kilogram meter squared. Yes, Buddha. Sir, I'm looking at the, 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 the formula there, right? Yes. Yeah, it's a bit tough to see also on this formula sheet that I have. It says mass and then in brackets length. Is that a two or three at the top there? Because there's a little thing up there. To the yeah, power. I see it. I see. I see. It's like super unclear. Yeah, to the yeah, power and then then height and then to the power and then I see when you're okay. So it's a, yeah. That's so it's squared, Buddha. Squared. I see. Yeah, it's very unclear. It's squared. Sorry, it's squared. There we go. You guys got that? Yeah, I see. I think if you had a notepad, it would be a lot better, maybe. Um, yeah, I still have that formula sheet I'm realizing now. It's actually quite unclear. And the answer you know, changes. It, yes, I know it changes, yeah, obviously. Yeah, I figured it just now. Sorry, man, guys, it's squared. Thank you for actually mentioning that because I need to make a note of that. I'm realizing now I can see now it's like, especially on the formula sheet itself, it's very, it's like, it's quite blurry actually. Let me just pick up the note back. Um, so if you have the note back, I think it's a lot more clearer. Yeah, note back is a lot clearer. Yeah. Like super, super clear. It was like I kind of fixed that. Yeah, the note back is a lot clearer. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So it's zero point one six two seven. Cool. Right. 
So that's a, using the formula there. So let me just remove this. Cool, that's fine. That, that should be squared there. Right, okay. So when we now rotating about um, the other axes, right? So let's go with Y now, right? So Y is a, uh, well, in the center, obviously. And what it means is rotating way. So rotating like that. And let's, if we can work out, um, let's just use for it again, it just talks better, I think. I, Y, Y. Um, that's how we call it. Um, and in this case, the formula is over there. And I should probably write on the formula first. No, sorry, that's not that's for that's not that formula. It's I, Y, Y would be there. It's basically now instead of your height, it would be your breadth. So it would be mass length squared plus breadth squared divided by 12. Cool. Page 89, no pack has all the flow. It's all clear. Yeah, it's I'm saying yeah. Page 89 or C15. Yeah, page C15. I don't know exactly how your page on the book. I'm saying the notepad is a lot clearer than you actually see it. So I kind of squeeze that thing in there, but anyway. Yes, no, no, no one complained last year. But anyway, oh. guess, it was, guess it wasn't needed after all. Yeah, 0 0.1. It can't be that it's a, a 0.176 now. Right? Hope you guys got this. Make sure you're using the formulas. Cool. You got you guys got so make sure you have a unit as well there. And the last would be, which is a classical rotation, we typically rotate through this axis is to the ZZ, the Z axis, and we're rotating that away. If you can imagine that. And I probably need some space over here. So I Z Z, the formula would be so it's B plus H. So you can see it's not they all change depending on, on which axis axis it's actually a a way to know um in which axis is actually rotating in this typical formula but i'm not really concerned with that so it's m and we should be using b plus h they're all squared over here and then divided by 12. cool so if you do that i'm not sure what you get Um, 0 0.039. Cool. So let's step back here, right? And this is what one of my aims was to to have a equation like something similar, something similar to this. Um, so we have three different values here. Let me just make make them highlight them there. That one. That one and that one. So, in terms of ranking, right, and you can use Z, X, and Y, which will be easier to rotate? In which axis? So, number one would be the least, and number three would be the hardest. So, the one, one, two, so. There's not enough space here. Eh? One, two, three. One will be least. Hardest to rotate. Easiest and hardest to rotate. Is that number one? Fantastic. He's getting it. Mr. Bussi is following. Who's, who understands that? By virtue of that number, what it means is that if you if you're rotating a rectangular, which is very seldom, rectangular body like that, 0 0.039 tells you what, what the IZZ tells you, it's the rotational inertia, which tells you the resistance 
to um, to what you call it um, rotation and 0 0.039. And the second one, and obviously we, Muda, what is the second one? No, are you sure? From least to the hardest. You only had three options and you chose the wrong one. But it, it, it was tricky because you could have made a mistake. <laughs> it's X, yes, thank you, Nocipo. And then it's Y. So, but on this values, what it's saying, it's harder for that dimensions it's more easier to rotate the body on the Z um, and then X and then Y. So it's harder to rotate it across the Y axis. And once again, it's, I mean, do we all get that first before I, before I move on? We all understand that. Very important concept. It's one of those questions where I'll check your understanding of, 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 of rotational inertia. I might give you two objects and I might ask you, um, I might give you two objects and place on the two objects, which, which of the two actually gives you um, the least amount of rotation about which, which axis. So yeah. I hope you guys got that. Okay, I didn't get it very well, sir. Fantastic, thank you. Um, it's perfectly fine. Please this pizza, thank you. So guys, reverting back to the initial part of the slide, right? We, we discussed um, inertia, right? So we know that mass is the linear inertia of... Um, yeah, it's a linear inertia, right? Fine. Went into rotational motion and we found a new property, right? Called mass moment of inertia, right? This guy over here. Right? Same thing. So if you if you're talking to 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 in the, 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 the linear inertia, obviously a, a, a body with a, a hundred kilogram body moving in a straight line is more is harder to move compared to kilogram i think we all follow that right so with the same logic right it stands to reason that depending now when you're rotating the axes are changing so one must be cognizant of that and now we have i z z i x x and i y y so the small amount in kilogram meter squared will be the easiest one to rotate and the one of the highest one will, will, will be the one hardest to rotate Right, so it'll be order to accelerate, basically, if that makes sense. Is it clear, Mr. Oh, these are the resistance to rotating. Yes, no simple. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, Mr. Kitongo and Shomi, did you get that? Or did I lose you? They are the resistance to rotating, yes. Oh, yes. You got it? No. Show me you're breaking up there. Sorry, sir. I'm at the airport. Uh, all here. All here. Sir. Oh. Okay, great, great. So, and thank you for saying that, Lucipo, as, as basic as it is, that's what the concept is. It's not more than that. It, it's, it's a, and what I'm showing is a function of which axis you rotate. It's exactly the same when you have a, 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 a ruler and you find that for beam, it's more, it bends easier when it's flat, we have a ruler in front of you, and compared to when you rotate it um, 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 vertically, it's harder to bend. So it's a similar concept, you know, um, if that makes sense. Obviously, that's why I like using the numbers and talk. So I hope everyone gets this, right? Um, yeah, there's a post a small exercise which kind of didn't work out. Cool. So we're aware that it changes with shape and um, well, obviously the material itself. And yeah, okay. So we've got another object there, um, which we're going to play around with just to get everyone comfortable. Um, I think it's a lot easier with this one, so I'll just duplicate this one. Oh, sorry about that. Um, 
So page C5, let me actually make a note of that there. Page C5, C15, sorry. Aren't you writing now? C15 for formulas. Ooh. Um, yeah, so compute all the axes. So obviously it will be now the cylindrical body over here, all right? So we're looking at I, X, X. We're looking at I, Y, Y, and we're looking at I, Z, Z. Um, let's say the mass, what is the mass of a previous body? Um, let's keep it under in 25. So mass is under in 25. And in 20, so under 25, I mean, what are you talking about? Or oh, am I misguided? Okay, cool. So guys, I want you to work on IXX, and then IYY and IZZ. So what I'm saying here, my beloved students, I can give you two different objects. Say work out all the axes, for the particular um, objects and maybe i'll ask you to group it in order what will be easy to rotate or what will be the hardest to rotate just to see if you actually understand you know what this value pro provides and as nocipo said in how many words there one two three four five six oh these are the resistance to rotating and yes exactly and once you have a resistance to rotating you can actually work out the torque of the body, which is very important to us. And once you work at the torque, you can work at the power. And that is what we're trying to achieve somewhere along the line. So we are just looking at understanding or playing around with the formula. The understanding is fairly easy. I'm not going to derive, just understand how to apply. It's very important. Okay, so I'm working on IXX, IYY, and yeah, the other one. Okay, so I'll just sorry, sorry about that. So are you guys busy doing this? Um I get two point six one. Okay, two point six one, that's fine. You guys agree with that? Uh, 2.61 for both I, wow, yeah, fantastic. It's very really good to know, 2.61. Um, just give me a moment. Uh, 2.61. And your I, Y, Y um, would be, let me just quickly see, it's I, that's your, I, Y, Y is exactly the same as, as the, you know, they're both the same. And then your I, Z, Z, they're they exactly the same magnitude. And I, Z, Z would be a different formula. And that is obviously rotating over here. And it's 1.199. Interesting, eh? So where is my X axis here? Cool. Obviously, there's reasons to do this. Okay. Is, did everyone get his answers? Well, let's say my netto bar is low. 0 0.019. Guys, confirm the answers, otherwise I have to do it here. It's just mass time diameter there, right? So it's 125 times 0 0.35. Squared divided by eight. Yeah, zero point zero. Yeah. Guys, can you see my thing clear? Because my, my network boss is one. It's 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 cool. Okay. Cool. 
219. Sweet. Okay. Clear, sir. Okay, cool. Um, thanks. So there we go. Right. And in comparison, it's obviously easy to rotate a shaft in the center as compared to the other two. And that is obviously just a, a, a you know, a warm up to to what this is all about. Um, we, we're gonna take our, our small tea breaks soon, but I just, and obviously now what I'm saying is that if you're comparing this, this guy to this, um, I think the smallest would be IZZ over here. And this would be the least, the least access to rotate. Um, in part, if you if you come if you're checking these two particular stuff, right? So I'm just so last semester I didn't actually properly show students, but anyway, I'm trying to get this right here. For some reason, you know why I'm losing my flow with this. And anyway, I thought it's and the hardest to rotate is basically when you're rotating it that way, and obviously it's harder along the Y as well. So be aware of in which way it's rotating actually. Okay, most students enjoy the section or they find it a bit difficult. Sometimes depending. Okay. Is that all clear to everyone? Does everyone know did everyone get these answers? Is that really important? This is the free mark section. So the first free mark section really for mass moment. Yes. Uh, um, so for the test and the exam, the the formula sheet will it be clear. And also, um, if I recall last year, the formula sheet was late, as some students say. Is this go not yeah. going to be the case this year? No, it won't be because the thing is, last year when I'm looking at the formula sheet at the back, I'm seeing how unclear it is. So. I'll just copy the page C15. It's just that back part, which is a bit of a problem. But it wasn't late last year. I can't even remember. But yeah, maybe it was. Um, it, won't, it won't be the case. Don't worry. I picked it up now. It won't be. It shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. But also, if you've practiced, it kind of works out in the end. So don't worry too much. But I mean, this is pretty important now that I realize that it is. Okay, but let's spend too much. But is there any questions with this, working out these formulas and stuff before we move on? So I want to get to the fun stuff here. Okay, seems like no one has any questions. All right, so what's next is another concept um, for the radius of duration, right? Um, and what this is essentially is, and I'm like still, anyway, yeah, I'll just start with this one here. So obviously we, we found out that your, your, your mass moment inertia is defined as the mass times some radius squared. Obviously that formula changes, that's a general formula and it changes depending on, um, the, the type of object, right? So what is the gyration? So I'll just tell you what it basically is. So it's the radius of gyration K, um, as it says there, of any body capable of rotating on the same axis in the radial distance from that axis to the point where the whole mass of the body would have, have to be concentrated for it to have the same moment of inertia as a body actually possessed about the axis. Basically what it means is that if we have a complicated system with varying masses, right? We, did, we add up all the masses, we add up all the mass moment inertias, and we represent it as a point mass for, for, for one body. Um, why is this important? Um, typically, we have these, so obviously this is showing all types of gears here, which is quite cool, like your rack and pinion, um, um, your bevel gears and all of this. And we represent this whole system as like one, one one radius or one mass moment we add up all the masses all the mass moment into one single thing right and that is called the radius of gyration um and and again 
or it's simply defined as it's k equals the root of i over m. So what it essentially means is that, like again, it's also the sum of i and the sum of m. And again, what's important with your radio generation is also it's axis dependent. And what it means is that depending on which axis, um, um, you know, which ax which axis the, the body is rotating by. Um, yeah, so this is the this is a typical set question which which is also asked um, for extra few marks. Um, yeah. Why is it important? I, I'm not particularly sure, but obviously uh, it's just to make a complex system in, in, in a point mass form and maybe it'll be more easy to analyze because obviously the registration will tell you it's it's mass moment. Yeah, it's it's basically used to make systems more simple um, to understand. So I'm just making aware there is this over here, right? And it's, obviously it's important to note about which axis you're rotating. Um, yeah, cool. So that's basically just that. Um, I'm going to show you now an example of this radius of gyration. Um, and yeah, we're just going to do like maybe two of them or whatever. And then you can actually start on this is what we're going to start on. Maybe what you're going to be really required to know is if you have a, 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 a whole shape, you're going to have different materials, different shapes together. I'm just showing you as, a, as, a, as an idea. There's another one. And I'll show you, we'll talk about all of these. You have all these shapes and the typical test questions fall in this kind of vein. Um, and like that, for instance, is another one. Um, even this. So I'm just showing you where we're actually heading to, just, just so you don't think we get lost here um, in terms of. So what do we do? We're going to combine different materials and find the mass moment. So, okay. So for, for this particular question, I'm going to just prepare my whiteboard here and I'm going to just talk to the concept of radius or of gyration. Um, and then we'll have a tea break and then we'll carry on. Yeah. So or it is, it should be in the former sheet as well. Um, let me just have a look. It's m equals k squared. And obviously, you just have to, you know, arrange it a bit better. Um, yeah, so whiteboard has drastically changed. I'll show you. Um, let me just quickly share. And obviously, a notepad also talks to all these things. You know, I, I just have a, a unique way of articulating what I know. Okay, cool. So, yeah, it has changed drastically, as you can see. So, I, my whiteboard looks nice and different now. Um, so, let me just, I can name my whiteboards now, apparently. I haven't actually had a look at this, my pins. But why can't I make it? Why can't I make it? There we go. Um, text, notes, documents. Um, how do I change like the background again? Settings maybe. Yeah, format background, black. I'll just give me that color. Is that dark? Yeah, so I'm actually just playing playing around with this. Okay, let's use let's use that. That looks a bit more looks more cute. You know. Is it all I get? Cool. Yeah. So let me just quickly paste that that question. Um then you'll see. Cool. Um, Again, what we're just basically doing is um, practicing this concept of radius of generation, right? It's a very simple concept here. Um, just paste it here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling the blue, man. It's, you know, why, why did they do this to me? I want black. Oh, there we go. Cool. Thank you. Um, yes, so I'm assuming everyone can see that. And what we're going to use is our basic formula. So obviously, so what do we have here? We have this assembly and we have different masses rotating about this x axis here, right? 
Um, what we're actually just going to do is just use your, your general formula. That's your general formula. That is why you end up with kilogram meter squared. Um, yeah, this is just a change of cool, man. And um, what we're going to do here basically is find the mass moment of this whole system and the radius of duration. And we're going to find the total torque required. And, and this is a very important thing. So I'm obviously adding all the extra questions now. So how do we do this? So we can start with the smallest. So we have a mass piece rotating. Um, and if you, have, you, you notice there, there is a question like this, um, something similar to this in the notes, but we just use your basic you know, I times MR squared here, instead of using the actual model for the for the sphere. But anyway, so for the first one, for the uh, at star of mass pieces, the first one is the all 100 kilograms. So, so it's going to be 1 times uh, 0 0.1 squared times 2. And the reason why it's because there's 1, 2 over there, right? Um, and we can do the same for the next, or we can say 2 times um, the next the all one kilogram times 0 0.1 squared um no not 0 0.1 they the, this is rotating further away oh man this is not linked anymore jeez okay cool um this is 0 0.2 squared so we found that one, oops, and that one, and it just do the rest. Um, so I'm gonna say this is 100 millimeters away, that's 200 millimeters away, um, that's 300 millimeters away. So this would be now um, two times one times 0 0.3 squared, Feel like i'm losing you guys here and two times one times 0 0.4 squared um no okay it's fine no it's fine okay thanks so i'm just finding the total here at 500 Um, and that's going to be 2 times 1 times 0 0.5 squared. And 600 is I times 2 times 1 times 0 0.6 squared. It's a bit of an overkill here. Hopefully we get the answers. And obviously the total mass moment um, would be... Um, Oh, man, the whiteboard, this new whiteboard has got me, eh? Okay, got it. So we need to just simply um, get that value, and we have to sum the total over here. Okay. So can you guys just, just get that total for me? So the first one would be, and the reason why we times by two, obviously, is two masses on both ends here, right? So 0 0.1 squared, that's 0 0.02 kilogram meter squared and as the radius increases the value will tend to increase it's harder to rotate as the radius increases um, 0 0.3 get 0 0.18 I should keep the unit there it's all the same unit I'm just changing that to 0 0.4 now 0 0.32 that becomes 0 0.5 and the last one is 0 0.6 0 0.72 so from this whole assembly we're going to find its total mass moment of inertia okay, someone just give me that value 1.82 yeah there we go thank you And again, like I said, the purpose of this is to get a radius of gyration. And as I said to you, um, you could literally call it they use mk squared or r squared. 
and k will simply be i divided by m. What's important here is that we have to we, have, we need the sum of everything here for the system. Because remember, we tend to represent this whole system as a single point mass. So obviously, we've gotten the um, the total that's 1.82, and I need the total mass now. So the total mass obviously would be, you guys can tell me what the total mass is. It's kind of obvious. It's 12 mass pieces of one kilogram each. What's the total mass? Um, it's 12, exactly. Plug and play. Yep. This is typically a, one of the easy ones, and we get 0 0.389 um, for millimeters. And that's your radius of gyration. I mean, it looks the same as that there. And then the last part of the question is obviously finding a torque. And I've mentioned to you what is torque equal to. Torque is not force times radius. Well, it actually is. Um, like I said to you, this is now I times alpha. And where does it actually come from? If you look at F equals MA, your, this becomes F times alpha R times both sides by R, you get F times R, you get mass alpha R squared, that becomes torque. Your mass, that doesn't look like a mass to me. Let's remove this, my eraser. Your mass, like I said, oops. This guy here and that guy there. Um, the I, And obviously alpha in that equation. So all we do is say 1.82 and we times it by the angular acceleration of four. Okay. So obviously you're gonna be asked to work out the torque required and maybe the power, who knows. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, it's 0 0.38. It's millimeters. Oh, sorry, it's meters. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monsipo. Yeah, my bad. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's meters. Did everyone get that? Can you say again where we got the four? My apologies. My apologies for this. It's over there. It's on the actual question. Post all these notes with all the extra stuff. Yeah, we'll see. I should you got it. It's four over there. Angular acceleration of four. Any questions, guys? Cool. Yeah, cool. So that's the whole point of all of this is, is is adding it all up and having a condensed version of, of whatever it is. That's the radius of generation, right? Just to possibly tell you why it's important, they probably don't. But like I said, it's probably to make the analysis more easy. And I say it's, it's a hypothetical concentration of rotational inertia. 
How could you be asked? Oh, fantastic. How could you be asked if the power was asked? Right, fantastic. Good question. If the power was asked, you're going to have to use, obviously, what I have to come now is power equals 2 pi n t over 60. What will typically be given is your rotational speed over there. Um, so that will be obviously given. Uh, but obviously, through the speed, you can actually work out your acceleration, your angular acceleration. But we'll get to that question. Yeah. Because remember, torque and power is related. Um, and why is my button not working? Okay. Strange. Okay, cool. That's all. Okay, guys, let's let's just go on a on a tea break. Um I just wanna quickly show you um it's 10 post now, which is a tea break. Why is why was K needed? Like I said to you, it's 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 a hypothetical concentration of the rotational um, inertia. It's 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 just a a way to make us to make the analysis more convenient. So I'll just quickly show you again what I mean by this. So whiteboard is now. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that if you have a complex system like this, for instance, and you're conducting analysis, instead of having it look looking all like this, you can you can replace all of this like with simple concentrated masses and stuff like that. Yeah. Can you leave that question up? Okay. And there is another question. I'm gonna post I'm gonna post that thing now. Cool. Yes, with the show where? Um, so you have to excuse me. And as I said, uh, I'm at the airport, so we're boarding now. So thank you, sir. I'll have to leave the class. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, you I'm joining. Sir. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, thank you for attending at least. Um, yeah, so keep in touch. Keep in touch and all the best with the flight. Thank, thank you, sir. 100%. I haven't finished copying. Okay, can you leave the question up? Okay. Shouldn't be copying, but anyway. Fine. Um, just I'm gonna post. Don't worry, guys. Um, I'm gonna post up the, the, the that note now. Um, we can consider our tea break started already, and we can come back at half past half past ten. So I'll just write in the chat here: Tito, Tito, half past ten. break or something. Make it 1035. Um Mr. Kitongo, um, what are you copying here? I'll just push that my thing here with notes. Okay, got to get used to this now. Muda, um do you wanna do you wanna do the question over what? What is your objective? Oh, where's the content? Uh, so I just wanted to go over it again. Okay, cool. I'm going to post the second blackboard now. Um, I've posted the, um, the notes with all that stuff now. Okay, just give me a moment. Yeah. It's posted, so you should have your money with this one. I've posted it so you should have it now. Um, what's this called again? Exercises, MI. Just, yeah, I've posted it. Um, you, you, you will see it on page, some page. Uh, it's going to be on like on the, yeah, it's posted here. Yeah. Just placing that. I'm just placing the other stuff as well. Okay. It's a it's an easy section, but some students, yeah, I guess you're not keeping up with it. You can it can trouble you, you know. Yeah, I've posted it, so it should all be there. Just have a look at the notes. Uh, 
Um, let me just quickly see. So how much you get for the power? Like I said, it's it's not. I don't worry about this question. I'll show you where it becomes more prominent. This was just a a, a play around, basically. Um, I play around with that question. Let me just. Touch. What you can do if you are nice and warmed up, you can try this question. So guys, I posted all these questions on, um, it says my quality is poor. I posted all of this on Blackboard, so you have a look at it. Um, check on the Blackboard now. And try to do, um, yeah. Try this one example number two. All the answers are there for you. You can actually try to do that one. 